We are hoping to connect with FIU epidemiologist Eileen Marty in just a few minutes by way of Skype, which is uh, technology getting in our way at the moment. So we're going to move, move along for just a moment. And we're going to move along to the state legislature where, you know, watching the legislature is sort of like watching, I think, a <laughs> NBA game. Almost everything happens in the final two minutes. All right, so tomorrow begins the final two weeks of session. So we have some South Florida lawmakers here to talk about really some of the most controversial bills in play, and they are hundreds of those, but we'll focus on just a few. Senator Perry Thurston, Democrat from Fort Lauderdale, uh, part of party leadership, and also along with Senator Thurston, we have Representative Tom Fabrizio, who is a Republican from Miramar, elected last November. It is so good to have both of you with us today. Gentlemen, Thanks. welcome. Glad you're here. Good Dana morning. Is, good to be here. And Tom Fabrizio, let me date myself and say your father and I worked together at the Miami Herald. He was a, he a terrific journalist, good writer, and it's nice to uh, meet you, even virtually. Michael, thank you so much for saying that. I appreciate it. Yeah. Uh, Senator Thurston, if I may, let's begin with uh, House Bill 1, which is now on the governor's desk. In the debate in the Senate on Friday, you were one of the leading voices against passage of this bill, which really stiffens, cracks down on protesters, makes uh, third degree felonies out of things which had been misdemeanors. Uh, if you could speak to Governor DeSantis right now, and in a sense you are, what would you tell him? What are your reasons for him not to sign this bill, which it looks like he's going to do? Well, well I think the time to speak to uh, Governor DeSantis has almost passed us by, Michael. It's clear that this is a result of the governor heeding the then President Trump's call to ask all the governors and, and, and really attacking the governors, calling them weak saying they are fools when they were looking at the Black Lives Matter movement marches across the nation and really across the world. He called upon the governors to do this. And clearly, Governor DeSantis uh, heard the dog whistle and, more, and was more than ready to implement this unnecessary, uh, unconstitutional legislation, which we really don't need. There's no need for this. But uh, we're past that point. I think it's time for the business community to weigh in to see if this is what uh, they would like to see happening in a state where they're at. And I think you see some of that coming out of Georgia. You're going to see more of it coming from Florida because there are going to be demands for them to get off the sideline and take take a position regardless of what that position is. You know, Senator, yeah. I asked, actually was on a conference call with a number of representatives from civil rights groups calling for exactly that from the business community and specifically seven Florida companies. I, I don't know if they've heard anything, but we specifically called and have heard crickets on that account. But I want to bring Representative Fabricio into the conversation. Welcome, your first time with us. I hope it's the first <laughs> of many. Um, you know, this, this protest bill, this anti-riot bill, is such a party line bill. And I wonder if Republicans in the House and Senate understand why particularly black Americans are seeing this along as a, as a racist bill. You know, protest is a distinctly American vehicle for civil rights progress. So would you speak, you know, I don't expect you to speak on behalf of all Republicans, but, but yourself, do you, do you see that perspective? Sure, sure, Glenna. Thank you so much. I, I, I hear what's being said on the other side, and it's unfortunate that it's be become so politically charged. This is really a bill about rioting, about violent protests. It's not about it's not about peaceful protests, which this doesn't invalidate or or quash in any which way. It's not a, the, the First Amendment issue of being able to protest is absolutely protected. This is a bill about rioting, about destructing uh, destruction of property, about uh, harming people. Uh, that's what this is about, and um, I believe that 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 issue is being spoken to in this bill. Uh, Representative Fabrizio, it's sort of after the fact, but I need to say there are a couple of provisions of this bill. Clearly, I am not an attorney. Perry Thurston is, but you know there there are uh, pr there's one provision here that I find very troublesome, which is it really provides a stand your ground defense for a driver who finds himself herself caught up on a road which is shut down by demonstrators, it essentially gives them a free pass to drive through 
those demonstrators uh, hurting them, even killing them, and present a defense, a defense which says, well, I, I, was, uh, uh, I was frightened, and it provides a justification, legal justification. Now, do you think that that is a acceptable provision? I, if, if I understand what you're asking, I think you're referring to the affirmative defense section. Yes, of the I am. Bill. Yes. Um, and that's, a, that's, a, that's a, pro, a provision in the bill. Of, as you know, in civil litigation, when a civil lawsuit is filed against uh, an individual or an entity for either negligent or intentional harm, um, uh, the, uh, in response, as a, in, in the answer, they can, uh, an affirmative defense can be filed. And this creates an affirmative defense for a riot situation. Um, so, um, as far as, um, I, I don't believe it, and I'm not sure if you, you, you couched it in these terms, but I don't believe this is a situation where there's a free pass for driving over people in any which way. I believe this is a situation where somebody can assert an affirmative defense that would be weighed by the court, um, and they would be able to present evidence in support of that affirmative defense, uh, like the plaintiff would be able to assert, uh, in, um, in bringing forth their cause of action. Do you, along those lines, do you see any uh, issue with Florida's stand your ground law otherwise as it stands right now? Um, I, I don't. Um, that's not necessarily part of this bill uh, directly, I don't believe. It, it is not. It is not. No. no. It, Senator it, Thurston, do you want to yes. yes. address let, that specific let, portion? Glenn, I do. I do. Like stand your ground, you know, when stand your ground was implemented, we had always had a self-defense statute called justifiable use of force. And that made stand your ground unnecessary. Stand your ground was an invitation to do violence. This provision in this bill, giving civil uh, protection for individuals if they commit these types of acts is an invitation. It's almost like saying you can do this. It's like if you're, in, if there's a right or if there's, Better yet, if there's protest and there are people in the road, you have a free reign to just run through them and you're going to be protected. This bill is a horrific uh, reflection on Florida. I can't believe that the Senate even took this bill up. But it, when you look at uh, Florida's history in terms of the things that we've done here in Florida, this bill is totally unnecessary and we should really think back to, we should really hearken on do we need this? Yeah. Well, it, it appears that Governor DeSantis, who asked for the bill, was its chief advocate, probably is going to sign it. Let's move on, if we can, to another really hot bill in the legislature, and that is the so-called election reform bill. And Representative Fabricio, uh, frankly, this kind of looks like a solution in search of a problem in many ways. I think you would agree. Uh, you were elected last November in an election that was just about picture perfect. So why is are these provisions uh, in this bill, which is still being worked on, uh, why is this election reform bill needed? Thank you, Michael. Uh, this bill actually hasn't come in front of any of the committees that I sit in front of. It's, uh, I think it's going in front of state affairs uh, soon. Um, but uh, it tries to do several things that I think are positive. Uh, it, it does try to increase uh, transparency, and I, I imagine that you'd agree that transparency is a good thing. Um, and uh, it, it just wants to make sure that that the people who are voting are the actual voters. Um, there is this uh, the, the four-year signature limitation. I think um, you know it's going to create a little bit more work, uh, but we want to make sure that these issues with the signatures are good. I'll tell you this for a fact: uh, I stood at polls. Uh, the primary election this last year and the general election during early voting and on election day. And there were people who had issues with and, and actually through the uh, vote by mail uh, process, folks that had issues with their signatures, uh, having very old signatures on file. So updating the signatures, I think, would not be a bad thing. Uh, the question has to do with maybe necessarily the frequency of it, but uh, updating the signatures I don't think is a bad thing. I don't think transparency is a bad thing. You know, I think uh, there's someone, one of the reporters from the Tampa Bay Times actually compared the governor's signatures <laughs> from the past couple of uh, elections and found that they were quite different. Senator Thurston, this SB yes. 90 is the bill number in the Senate. And it's, uh, to, to Michael's point, it's, it's being like the chefs are cooking it. And right now <laughs> it looks like the drop boxes might be back. And that was a huge bone of contention because those drop boxes 
uh, last November proved to be really great for a lot of people. Where, where does that stand now? Well, well, everything about this bill is problematic. And the reason it's problematic is because it's uh, the legislative version of voter suppression. And the reason we know that is because, just like you said, uh, the election that was just he held was deemed perfect, that it, we, it was held up as the gold standard. But you see, the individuals who are behind me on the wall, the reason they are protesters and demonstrators is because they were trying to secure the right to vote. So when you have a sordid history like Florida that goes back to denying people the right to vote for ages, whether it be Jim Crow laws, whether it be poll taxes, this is just a continuation. Of course, it doesn't say we want to stop people from voting, but if you look at the particulars, including the drop box Leonard, that you talked about, there was no problem with that. But why is it in the bill? Why was it in the bill? Why does it continue to be brought up? not only here, but in Georgia and in across the other 37 states who are doing this. This is a national policy to say, how do we stop people from voting? One of the things we should be doing is encouraging more people to vote. But the drop boxes were great. People who were concerned about the pandemic, people who just was concerned about the mail delivery system. All of that was there. The vote by mail worked perfectly. We'll recall that we had Pete Antonacci in Broward County this last cycle, and it went quite well. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, Antonacci is no longer the Broward Supervisor of Elections. We hope and expect that things will go well, but we have had a sordid history in Broward County with elections. Well, the previous election supervisor did have problems, and the one before her. So we, we understand what the history has been. All right, everybody, stick uh, where you are. Uh, we're going to take a brief break, break and back uh, with more with these legislators in just a minute. We are back taking the temperature of Tallahassee with Senator Perry Thurston, Democrat from Fort Lauderdale, and State Rep Tom Fabricio from Miramar, Republican. In the short time we have together, gentlemen, um, with all of these really controversial bills being in the headlines, we're really not talking about auto insurance. That affects everybody watching today. Uh, Senator Thurston, are, are you going to eliminate no fault and mandate that everybody have personal injury coverage, and, and what are the ramifications of that to everyone listening? Well, I, I think that clearly we have uh, an issue with auto insurance, and we need, for all of the drivers who are out there on our street, we want them to be covered. There's been a bill that's been brewing in the Senate for the entirety of the session. We did get an opportunity to address that bill, and we've passed it, and there will be a uh, Right now, there's mandatory BI on the bill, and I think that it's going to be a lot more movement on this bill before the final version. I expect it to bounce back, to the, go to the House and bounce back, and we probably will make some more changes. But I think that this is probably the best opportunity in years, and uh, it may lead to the elimination of PI. Yeah, a representative for BCO. Uh, Fabricio, you, you are a member of the House Commerce Committee. This is really in your wheelhouse. What, what is the, how are you going to improve the auto insurance situation in the state by eliminating no fault? Well, we've really looked at this issue in several different ways. Um, and one view that I've taken on from very early on was perhaps continuing to work to fix uh, the PIP, the no fault system. Um, but uh, that being, uh, you know, being that we've, uh, it seems that we're moving beyond that, uh, the issue is that we want to make sure that our constituents and throughout the state, and in particular with folks in Hialeah and Miami Lakes, and throughout and in Miramar, that we want to make sure that their auto premiums are in line. We, we, these, uh, the, like Senator Thur Thurston said, we've been having uh, quite a bit of, quite a bit of trouble statewide with auto insurance. But we want to make sure that premiums are in line and people are getting the uh, appropriate coverages that they're going to need. Representative Fabrizio, you, you sponsored a bill in the House that, I, I'm just going to put my own headline on it having read it, it, it kind of protects the fuel industry um, and possibly at the expense of some green energy progress. Am I reading that right? What is that? So I'll tell you, that's uh, House Bill 839. Um, that's uh, an energy fuel, a transportation fuel energy preemption. 
And the reason why we filed this bill is because a couple of things. Uh, there has been an ordinance filed out in uh, Penaluma, California, and then uh, an actual an ordinance was filed out in Tampa uh, that spoke towards getting, uh, not allowing transactions of non-renewable energy sources by 2030. Um, while I believe those are laudable and very important initiatives, and we certainly want to go to renewable energy sources uh, as quickly as possible, I don't think we're quite there yet. And to say that we're not going to be able to have gas stations in a municipality or in a county would be would cause a statewide regional issue. Um, as, uh, if, if you limit, uh, for example, in Tampa, if you if you don't allow uh, petroleum to be imported through the through the port of Tampa, that could cause a, a massive problem with uh, with transportation in Central Florida. Same thing for Miami-Dade County. Yeah. I don't expect these issues to occur. I've spoken to many of the mayors in my juris in my district, and they say that they would not uh, support an ordinance that would, by de facto, yeah. eliminate all transportation energy. Uh, but this is something that is a potential issue. It's something that's being discussed, uh, and it's something that we need to make sure it doesn't happen. Yeah. So what the bill does is, because it's very important that that we clarify and we just move beyond the headline here. What the bill does, it, okay. it says that municipality... Representative, I'm going to, forgive me, I'm going to have to interrupt you here. And Senator Thurston, thank you very much for being with us. We really appreciate it. We'll follow what goes on in Tallahassee.